This is a video, sort of, about VAR. But this is a video about VAR in 2017. Now I should admit that I'm really way, way, way behind the times on this. Because in 2015, something came out called ES6. What is ES6? Well, ES6 is short for E C M C A script 2015. What's the chance that I got that right? Hold on a sec. This is an extra C. <laughs> e C M A. It stands for something. Some kind of consortium of mango-loving astronauts. I don't know. But this is a consortium of people who come together to talk about what, what is the syntax of the JavaScript language and how should it work. And so in 2015, which was quite a while ago at this point, the, the, the consortium came together and thought, let's, instead of saying var to declare a variable, let's declare a variable, right? Instead of saying var x equals 100, let's declare a variable by saying let x equals 100. And also, quite possibly, let's offer an alternate option by saying const x equals 100. So currently, right now, if you were to write this into your code, all three of these would be valid JavaScript statements. But they would all do something slightly different. And I should also mention that one of the reasons why it's taken people like me years to get with the program is because even these aren't necessarily supported by every single web browser that people are using in the world. I think at this point, you know, most modern web browsers support ES6 natively. And if you're a web developer, there, a professional web developer, there are all sorts of ways to put something behind the scenes that, so that if somebody is, if the code is written in ES6, but if the web browser doesn't support it, it works anyway. This is not the subject of this video, but this is a subject of, well, what are these things? There, and by the way, isn't there like ES8? Like I'm already way behind, so I'm like here making my ES6 video. Somebody in the future when it's like ES712 will be like amused by this old historical antiquated like video of this human being with actual like human body instead of robotic whatever. Anyway, I'm, I'm off track now. ES6 is a standard. I'm starting to use it in all of my videos. So. What is the difference and why? So I'm going to just tell you what the difference is in technical terms, and then I'm going to go and explain it. Var x uses something called block scope. Let x, oh my god, <laughs> I said it wrong. I did it totally wrong. Oh, by the way, there's like so many people watching this video who are just like screaming at their screen for like the last 30 seconds. Uh, var uses function scope. Let uses block scope. And if you program, if you learn to program in Java, hey, drop my, sorry, in Java, in C++, in processing, which is built on top of Java, and this is how I learned to program, everything was always block scope, and it's the only way that I think. I actually just, when I even use var, I'm just assuming it's block scope and writing code as if it is block scope, but it's not, and that's what's prone to error. And block scope, I personally, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be too down on function scope. I'm sure function scope is a very nice scope, and I would love to hang out with function scope and have some time together, but I prefer block scope. Um, and so let's, let me get to the computer. This is way too long of a video to explain these two things. I can't believe you're watching this. Let me get to the computer and start to explain what I mean here. Okay, I'm over here. So I have some code and uh, I am going to start writing some code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say var x equals 100. Okay, I'm gonna say var x equals 100. I'm going to say console.log x console.log x. This is like a weird example to start with and I'm gonna to get to some examples that will hopefully help a little bit more, but what should happen when this code runs? Setup starts, this first line of code should execute. And what should it say? I don't know what x is. Are you nuts? I haven't heard about anything named x. Now I'm gonna say what x is, and if, the, if it was able to go onto the next line of code, it would say what x is, and then it would console log 100, but that's actually not what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hit refresh. All I care about is the console here. 
I got undefined in 100. Well, that's not so unreasonable, right? Because x is something that's undefined, but shouldn't I really maybe possibly get an error there? Let's look what happens if I switch this now to let. Uncaught reference error, x is not defined. So you might say, oh, well, I like the other way better because it didn't break. But here's the thing. The fact that it is not letting you talk about that variable above where it was declared and initialized is, uh, is, a, is, more, uh, is, is a situation which is less prone to error. Let me show you some reasons why. So first of all, one thing that's interesting is I could do this, let x. Then I could say x equals 100. And then I could put the console log here. This would now give me exactly what var did. So why? Why? What, what's going on here? Well, there's something in JavaScript with var called hoisting. Hoisting. I'm so proud of myself for knowing what hoisting is because there was a long period of time where people would say, I'm like, I don't know what that is. But now I do, I think, and I'm going to explain it. So if I'm hoisting, what is hoisting? So I'm going to write some other code. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say for var, I, I'm going to use var, i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, I'm going to write a loop, and I'm going to, like some stuff will happen here, and then I'm going to say uh, var x equals mouse x plus 100, and then I'm going to say if x is greater than 50, then var z equals 20, and y, e and, and, uh, and then draw an ellipse, uh, you know, whatever, var y at, x comma y, 100, 100. So this is sort of nonsense code, but I'm, I'm writing this code to make a point. <laughs> there is a point. When you write code like this in ES, previous to ES6 in JavaScript, what the interpreter actually reads, your code is actually modified before it runs. It does this thing called hoisting, and it actually does this. I don't think, right? And then I'm going to take out, it, it adds like a line of code at the top of the function that declares all the variables and then deletes all the variable declarations. So this is why, this is why those variables with var, those variables with var have function scope. Because even though if I declare var down here, var y equals 20, the hoisting process puts the declaration at the top, and it's a variable that's available for the whole, for the entire uh, function setup. It has function scope, even though it's declared and only used inside of this if statement. So I can say things like console log y up here, and I can do things like console log i at the bottom. So I'm going to get undefined because y doesn't have a value yet. And then I'm going to get, what am I going to get down here? Console log 100 because that loop is going to have finished and left i with the value 100. So that's exactly what I got and even drew part of that ellipse. And then, so technically, like this code is sort of problematic because I've declared two variables. I've hoisted two variables called i, right? So now, the, uh, so this is, really the, this is really the issue. This hoisting process, which happens behind the scenes and lets variables be available to a broader scope beyond where they are actually declared and used, uh, makes, makes code prone to error, at least in my experience. So, you know, for example, if I'm writing a loop here, if I simplify this, like, and I want to have a separate variable for i somewhere else, I'm really just, I'm running into trouble. The fact that I can actually use this variable i afterwards is, there's all these problems that could happen by accident if I had another variable that was more global called i, and the scope can get really confused. So, I should probably redo this video. <laughs> so, using let is a nice solution to this problem. Now, I don't know, so why is it called let versus var? I mean, in my understanding of this is, well, why not just change the behavior of var? Well, if you change the behavior of var, then you're possibly going to break all this code that has been written over time. So in order to write, in order to have a new version of JavaScript that has variables that only have block scope, block scope, they're only available within whatever curly brackets they're declared in, whether that's if, whether that's for, 
a new name has to be invented. So we just have to all change over and say like, now let's just all use let, let's use let. I can't remember, but let's use let, let's use let, let's use let, I'm gonna use let, I'm gonna use let, let. Again, this video could have been made 30 seconds by me just saying, hey, remember that thing called var? It's called let now. But there is actually a technical difference and let's look at that again, right? Right now, I'm gonna run this code and we see 100. I console log i as 100. If I change this to let, I will get an error. i is not defined, and that's the error that I want. i is only available inside of this block. This is the block. <laughs> that's the block. i has block scope. If I put an if statement in here, if mouse x is greater than 20, let j equal 20, console log j, I will get an error here because j is only available for this. And you want your variables to only be available for, I mean, sometimes you need global variables. I'm not saying all variables should have the littlest scope as possible, but they should have the smallest scope that is needed. It helps you organize your code, helps you be less prone to error. I mean, making errors is fun. Everybody should make errors, but this is a helpful thing. Okay, <sighs> what do you guys think? Did I explain that? What questions do you have? I guess write them in the comments. Um, and ah, I didn't get to talking about what const is. So let me try to, let me try to talk about in a separate video, in the next video, what const is. And if there's anything that I missed or some questions, there's a live chat going on right now if you're watching this as an edited video later. If there's anything that I missed, I'm gonna go check that live chat and talk about it at the beginning of the next video. And there's a lot more ES6 stuff that I wanna talk to, talk about. So there's uh, classes and there's promises. So I want to get to that stuff eventually. But I just wanted to talk about in this video, let.